que van a escuchar y aprender hoy. Y quiero que vayan a su vecindario a, a, con sus vecinos a, a compartir lo que están aprendiendo hoy. Right? So share what you're learning today. Porque lo que yo temo es que muchos de los padres no reconocen que tienen que votar y además no saben los detalles. Like, what are the details about why this decision is happening? Why it's the best decision? So ustedes, de, de, representando a la Kelly, van a ir con sus vecinos, van a decir, tenemos que ir a votar, tenemos que, y no importa cómo votan, right? Lo más importante es que tengan su voz. Mm -hmm. Entonces, es tan importante de Dr. Strike que está con nosotros hoy, porque él personalmente quiere explicar cómo llegamos aquí a este punto, cuáles son las decisiones que tenemos que tomar, y cómo él puede uh, ayudarnos a entender que por qué se necesita tomar su voz con nuevas escuelas. Uh -huh. Nuestros hijos merecen nuevas escuelas. Uh -huh. Pero quiero que ustedes estén bien informados, bien, bien educados tocante a este asunto, ¿ok? okay. ¿Y cuántos de ustedes, how many of you, cuántos de ustedes prefieren español? Yo sé que son, todos somos bilingües, pero ¿cuáles de ustedes prefieren escuchar en español? Con su mano, por favor. Okay, so then we can continue in English too, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Somos bilingües, ¿qué pasó? Okay, pues. Okay, so let's present to Dr. Strike. Thank, thank you so much for being here, Dr. Strike. Okay. Es mejor para mí hablar en inglés, so I'm going to speak. Yeah. You speak very good No, mi madre me habla en español, yo contesto en inglés. Yo soy mitad cubano. Yeah, yeah, wow. All right, so... Um, This has been a long time. This started. This whole process started four years ago. This is my fifth year here. When I first came to Holyoke in 2015, I was really surprised with how the, the how bad condition the buildings were in. Kelly was one of them, um, but a lot of our schools are in really tough shape. And we're going to see a video in a moment that is going to show you why I'm concerned. And you know that your children, after they leave Kelly, they go to Peck to go to Veritas, the Peck building, yes. and I don't. I don't want to scare you about it. I think Veritas is a good school. The building is not a, a great building. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But what, what we decide, we, the, the state of Massachusetts gives school districts uh, money to build schools. Um, every year they decide to, to do a certain amount of projects. And when you, pay, when you pay the sales tax in Massachusetts, one penny of that, anything you buy, goes towards build new school buildings across the state. So Holyoke hasn't had a new school building since Dean was built in 1989. How many of you went to Dean? So, mm -hmm. oh, well, see, here we go. <laughs> right. So 1989 was the last time that we had a new school in Holyoke. They've done renovations, like they reno this summer we did reno the state helped mm -hmm. us do the renovations of the windows here and the doors, but no new school. So the city of Holyoke, uh, people, the taxpayers already pay the tax. You all do when you buy things. Mm -hmm. um, and the state, Uh, we applied for um, support to, to look at building, uh, improving our middle schools uh, in 2000 and around 16. And the state, we were a little surprised because they said, yes, we, we approve your application. We, we, we weren't surprised that because we knew our buildings were in bad shape, but it's not easy to get an application through. And they said, great, yes, we, we know that you have a problem because they, help, they, they helped us do a study of all the buildings in Holyoke, including Lynch. They looked at um, Lynch and every building. And what they found was that, all, that our buildings um, are very old. Uh, our high schools are okay, because they're newer and they were more recently renovated. But they were very concerned about Peck, Lawrence, Metcalf, and McMahon. And Lynch, they said, don't even, you can't even talk about Lynch, because that stopped being a school 10 years ago and it needs a lot of work and it's going to be too much cost to fix. Um, and what they did say is the most concerning thing for you as a school district is you don't have any space that's a appropriate for middle school. All the buildings were built as elementary schools. The only building that we have left that was built as a middle school is Peck. And they did say that is one of the worst buildings we have ever seen. The way it's designed, and you're going to see that in a moment, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have what it needs. And so. They said, you don't have, they said you don't have science labs, you do not have, um, the hallways aren't appropriate. Like this school, this school was built for little kids up to fifth grade. Wow. This doesn't have labs, it doesn't have the lockers, the right kind of locker spaces. Yeah. They don't have the, the music spaces and the art spaces for middle school students. It's, so they said, uh, we will support you to look at a plan for middle school. 
And what we decided after talking, there's a committee that's made up of people in the city who, and we talked to parents, we talked to teachers. What they just said is, we, we don't think one school is a good idea because that's 1,100 middle school students for all of Holyoke. Holyoke has about 12, almost 1,200 sixth through eighth graders in the city. Said we don't, we decided, we told the state, we don't think having all 1,100 kids mm -hmm. in one school is, a, is safe. Mm -hmm. Is going to be structured enough, yeah. and Peck used to be like that, mm -hmm. and that was one of the reasons people didn't like Peck when mm -hmm. it was that big. So we said we would prefer to build two separate schools of about 500 to 550 students, which is about the right size because it's not too small. Like right now, our middle schools are too small because we can't. Like here, Kelly, you probably have. Well, that's Kelly only has seventh and eighth grade, but you have very small middle schools. Um, but we also didn't want it too big. So we said we'd like to do two middle schools. Half of the city goes to one school, half of the city goes to the other school. And we decided to propose building one of the buildings where Lawrence is, across the street from Lawrence, where there's an empty lot where there used to be the perpetual help church. And then the other was, Peck is such a bad building, we need to take it down, and the state will pay for the demolition or knocking uh, Peck down. So to build the other building where Peck is. So that would be your two middle schools. That's the proposal. We didn't know what the state was going to say when we made that proposal because they don't do two schools at once. We were, this time we were very surprised. They said, yes, we like your plan. It makes sense. You, you want to move your school system to have separate elementary, middle, and high. And parents have said that. Teachers have said that. They want separate schools for the different age groups. They said, that makes sense, and it'll help you rethink the whole school system. So we made the proposal, they said yes. They came back and, and, and um, they voted on, on, on giving us money for the plan. Now they're gonna give us, um, the, the two buildings together cost $133 million. They're gonna give us 75 million of that money. The rest of the money, though, has to come from the, the city. And, we are, the school district is going to use some of its savings to pay 30 million of that. We're allowed to do th that much. But then what's left is another 28 million. And that is what the taxes are for on property. The, the way that schools are funded on a, uh, for a, a project like this is would be your property taxes. So if you own property or if you rent the person who does own your property, their tax, um, their, uh, their tax rate would go up a little bit with this project. The average home in Holyoke costs 190,000. So that means that the average tax bill would go up $129 um, a year. And we think that's about $10 a month. Right, is that right? A little more than $10.80 a month, which we think is a very good deal for the city of Holyoke for building two brand new state-of-the-art schools. Now these schools will have what we all think schools should have. If you've ever been to Granby and seen their, or South Hadley has a brand new school. Yeah. Um, the schools, and this is the same builder that did South Hadley. The schools will have uh, air conditioning, heating, they will have good heating, not the heating that you see at Kelly School sometimes. It's better now. It's because we have a new boiler. Yeah. Windows, doors, yeah. So the district has spent a lot of money on Kelly We're very grateful. Um, it also will have a parent center, uh, a health clinic. It will have all sixth grade will be on one floor, seventh grade on one floor, eighth grade on another. So they'll be separated from one another. There'll be a lot of small classroom spaces for extra support for special education or students who are learning English. And there'll be an outside fields, you know, the, the turf. Not the grass, but like mm -hmm. the, the fancier turf as part of the field. There'll be outside basketball. Everything from middle school, science labs, the lockers. There'll be a, a, a stage in part of the cafeteria. There'll be music rooms. There'll be an art room, right? All things we don't have. <laughs> I don't, we don't have anywhere for middle school, and we think kids deserve to have those experiences. Um, it'll be the safety in the school, like 
I, those of you who went to Dean, you know how Dean, when you walk into the yep. building, you can't get into the rest of the nope. building. You have to check into the office. Yep. Here, you open the door, the, the school's open. Now, they, they do the best they can to make sure. They check everybody. But that's not what the, late, the most advanced safety um, techniques are. But yep. the biggest thing about this is not about new, for me, is not about fancy new buildings. I like that. I want that for my, I would want that for my own children. Yeah. But it's about cre getting a better middle school program for kids. We can do more in a building that's designed for them and that puts the service. Right now, we, you know, Kelly has music, instrumental music program. Mm -hmm. But when we organize that, we have to do that at eight different schools. We have to send the person because we have eight different middle schools. We will be able to have a band in both schools because all we have to do is provide those same services in two schools. Yeah. Same with sports. Kelly has a middle school team. But we can't offer the same number of sports because you don't have enough children mm -hmm. to do to have that. We would only have two schools with children at the two schools. So we could run a lot more sports programs and a lot more um, arts and after school programs because it would just be over two sites. So the, 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 the vote, as Mr. Soria said, is Tuesday. If they doesn't pass, the, um, we don't know what's going to happen. We, we, what, we do, what we do know is it's, the state has told us that you're going to have to go back to the end of the line and uh, reapply. Because the money that they are, have, have offered us, they'll just, they'll just send it to another community. That, the money that you pay the sales tax for. They'll just give it to another community, and then we have to go back and reapply. So it will be at least eight years before we can then apply and then the buildings would be built. So it would set us way back in the process. Um, and we would t I still believe we need to move to middle school, but we would be doing that within buildings that are not suited for middle school. I don't want to, I don't want to continue using PEC as a building. Okay, and I'll, I'll show you why in a second. I know that one of the questions people want to ask, what's going to happen to Kelly School? So Kelly School would be an elementary school. It would eventually be pre-kindergarten to fifth grade. That's the best thing. And we would also be, well, now it's fourth, but we probably would bring fifth grade back because sixth grade, seventh, and eighth would be in the new middle schools. Okay? That's the plan. That, we, we, we don't know exactly where they would go, uh, for, we, but we, the plan is to have pre-K to fifth, and then all the kids would go to one or the two middle schools. Okay? Right now, what's that? No, no, no. Oh, you're okay. So, um, that, that's it. But Morgan would be pre-K to five. Kelly would be pre-K to five. Donahue would be pre-K to five. Sullivan would be pre-K to five. And I'm missing one of the schools. Uh, no, Lawrence would not be a school. Would not be a school. They would probably turn that into apartments or, uh, because they can't tear Lawrence down because it's a, um, a, a historical building. So I do want to just show you a video of Peck School. Uh, this is a, uh, Sam, do you want to, oh, you got it from there, okay. All right, this will show you why we're so concerned about the building at Peck. The Peck School was built in 1973 to hold 1,000 students. It consists of two multi-story octagonal towers and a single-story gymnasium built into a hillside. The plan is unusual because of its irregularly shaped classrooms and large windowless spaces in the center of each floor plan. From a school safety standpoint, the building has several major problems. First, the main entry is located where it cannot be seen directly by staffed offices. Visitors are buzzed in and can freely visit the building without having to sign in with staff. Once in the school, the quarters circle around each tower with regular classrooms distributed on the exterior. These corridors have poor sight lines that make supervision and wayfinding difficult. The third major life safety concern is that Peck is a three-story school building with no sprinkler system and a large number of inoperable windows. Any major renovation of the building will trigger a requirement to install sprinklers throughout. The school also has major environmental problems that make it a challenging and unhealthy place to teach. The greatest challenge is that the heating system is a proprietary electric-based system that was installed in 1973 by a company that no longer exists. 
classrooms overheat in winter and summer. P poor air quality and thermal control leave students and teachers struggling with lethargy and experiencing higher than normal rates of respiratory illnesses. Another environmental concern is that these obsolete heaters emit a loud background noise. Related to the thermal comfort issues, the classrooms on the outside of the floor plan have small windows and offer very poor daylighting. A large percentage of the windows are made of a scratchable plastic such that views from many classrooms are not possible. Classrooms on the interior are worse than on the exterior because they lack windows or natural light altogether. This room is an example of an interior space where the old science labs were once located and have become obsolete. Many of the larger classrooms, like this one, have been repurposed to meet special education needs that they were not originally planned for. As the design team for the feasibility study, we spent five months exploring the possibility of renovating PEC. One of the greatest challenges we saw was the building's underlying structural system. PEC is constructed with the same basic structural system as a Walmart. The walls are unreinforced concrete block walls supporting steel joists with concrete floor slabs. It is built to 1973 standards and is incapable of supporting any increased structural loads. Any major renovation will trigger a requirement to meet the current seismic building code. Hazmat issues are also a concern in a building built in 1973. During the feasibility study, we tested materials to quantify hazmat remediation costs. We discovered that the exterior walls of PEC are filled with vermiculite. The building also contains asbestos, mercury, and lead paint, and is presumed to contain PCBs. PCBs are volatile compounds that don't stay where they are installed. If during a renovation, window caulk is tested and found to include PCBs, the masonry around the window also has to be tested and potentially removed. The hazmat remediation exposure alone is greater than $2 million. In addition to sprinklers and insulation needs, we also have to account for current ventilation requirements, accessibility requirements, and elevator upgrades. In reviewing the renovation option, the building committee found that the renovation was a far less cost-effective proposal than demolishing the current school and building new. The proposed new schools, in contrast, will exceed current energy standards by 20% in order to reduce operating costs and ensure the building is uniformly comfortable and efficient for decades to come. The schools will be organized to meet today's teaching and learning styles, but are planned for flexibility in room types and furnishings. They will have better daylighting and acoustic treatment, and materials and systems will be selected to ensure that lower operating costs and student health and safety are always top priorities. Music